We are in the heart of Christmas season, and I have started to notice a disturbing trend among social media, Peach, and that is many, many what? girls and young women selling expensive beauty products in what I think are pyramid schemes, but they claim are multi-level marketing companies. Are you, are you <laughs> seeing a lot of these too? I am seeing a lot of those, unfortunately. And yeah. It's weird because they say stuff like, like everyone says I shouldn't do this, but I'm making money and my buy-in was only this. And then if you buy in and it stresses me out because I feel like it's very pretty ladies trying to sell their products to non-pretty ladies in kind of a cycle, but maybe I'm off because I've never used these products, obviously. So I don't know, but it's a weird well, I trend. I feel like if it's, if it's a pyramid scheme, they're not trying to get you to buy the products. They're trying, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Okay. They're trying to get you to buy into it. So they're trying to get you to like buy it just to sell it. True. So it's not like they're trying to sell it to you. Like you need this or like you need to buy into this business. And also you'll probably like the product, you know, and it's always like a $400 buy-in. True. Really. I just you think it's crazy. When they say yeah. like, oh, it's normally 180, but now you can get it for 119. I'm like, that's still very expensive. But you can't buy it like anywhere else. So yeah. it like doesn't even make sense. I know. They're like, it's a, I don't know. It's, I see it all the time. It drives me crazy. But if girls are buying it and liking it, maybe I shouldn't be one of those weird guys on the internet that hates on it. Maybe I'm in the wrong. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the love of your life is a pyramid scheme girl and there's nothing wrong with that. I would but, be fine, fine with that if I was a stay-at-home dad and she made enough money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I posted um, a video, a sentimental video I made for my really good friend who had died a year ago. And it was like that day. And it was like a remembrance video. It was obviously something like sad. And this girl responded to the video on my story being like, hey, girl, love your content. Think we should collaborate. <laughs> and I was like, read read the room read That's the room so bad so ridiculous i was like what is wrong with you like clearly like not supposed to respond to i know i know you share stuff where you know people are sliding in your dms or not reading the room but that is insane to me it's someone's like i'm gonna reach out to this list of people it's like so like it's like a sociopath move like no empathy like just responding to whatever they post yeah it's just like a bot or something sometimes mm -hmm. i'm like maybe it's like not a real person but then i'm like i think it is that's so Anyways. bad i guess i'm triggered by it not because uh people are ever sliding into my dms but in college at bowling green where we both attended people were always mm -hmm. trying to get you into pyramid schemes our one friend sold energy drinks which I believe was called yeah. Surge that tasted like gasoline. <laughs> he was pushing them super hard all the time. Mm -hmm. um, his name's Matt in case he listens. And then another, <laughs> another friend was trying to sell these non FDA approved, what he called magic weight loss pills, which were literally oh, just, they're caffeine terrible. pills. Yeah. That so is so dangerous. Yeah. Right. And He's like, no, no, the FDA is not going to approve it because they like, you know, don't believe in it. And I go, no, because it's not real. <laughs> also, um, we went, one of our friends took us to like some pyramid scheme talk in like some basement frat house. Oh my God. And I was like, what the hell? And the guy slipped and said it was a pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. He was like, it's a pyramid scheme. And then he was like, oh, I, oh that's a joke. Uh -huh. And we were like, oh my God. It was well, like it's $700 for like a oh pack of energy drinks. It's, they'll say it's multi-level marketing and then they'll draw a picture and it's literally a pyramid. Yeah. They literally draw the picture, yeah. <laughs> draw it and like outline it. And are like, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's just triangle. Pyramids are different than triangle scheme. Triangles. Yeah. I know it's, it's the college is it's, if you're a dumb person at college, you can lose a lot of money. Um, giving away to these schemes and stuff which i feel mm -hmm. bad about but i guess you have to it's better to learn um yeah than never learn but so this kind of got me on the topic and the idea of like when you get tricked into a terrible job and i thought that i had found the perfect job a few years ago 
it was supposed to be I was supposed to I work it was at a car dealership and all you were supposed to do was literally once the sale's done shake the hands with the people do the easy paperwork with them and then show them the car like here's your brand new like price is right here's your brand new car so I get there in the first day they're teaching me how to sell cars I was like whoa whoa, whoa. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to sell cars and then on the fourth day, I had no real training other than the basic stuff. These people came in, they're like, hey, you have to, uh, you know, you have to sell them this car. And I was like, do you think they're going to want to go on a test drive? He's like, yes. So these people came in, it was like pouring rain. They're yelling at me because I didn't know what I was doing. And that was kind of the beginning of like a five month span of just every day, like every horror story you can think of at a car dealership that like you'd imagine in a tv show happens Mm -hmm. and it was uh, upsetting because i was supposed to they said i was going to deliver cars which means like you you would actually drive them to someone's house and be like this is your new car no i wish i did that a few times but delivery was supposed to be like that's delivering the paperwork whatever oh but really i was just a non-commissioned car salesman so i was hourly so Uh people would be like you know trying to haggle with me i'm like i don't care i'm on the clock so we could sit here all night yeah <laughs> but That's awesome. yeah it basically turned into me being a personal like lackey for the owner um he mm-hmm. would have me drive cars to his rich friends like expensive cars and he's like yeah drive this you know the freeway like 45 minutes away I'm like okay and i would go to their house they'd invite me in and i'd no, have like in. yeah and i'd have like coffee and stuff While they're filling, like, (laughs) if they hand me a check for, like, $80,000, I'm like, okay. It's just, like, Oh, that's a lot of pressure, having a check for that much money in your I know. I felt like I was, like, a mafia assistant, not, like, in the (laughs) mafia. But it's just frustrating, because I think a lot of people have that where, you know, and then you get, like, skeptical. Like, any other job you apply for now, you're like, okay, what am I really going to do? And they're like, what do you mean? Like, no, no, I know this isn't the job. It's always. That was the only one that came to mind for me. I mean, there was a guy there. Well, I guess I had two breaking points. The first was a lady who came in to pick up her car. Like she, she had ordered it. So we had to get it from somewhere else. And when she came in, she's like, I don't want to work with Steven today. I want to work with someone else because he didn't push me hard enough to buy the car. And the sales, the sales approach at the dealership was a no pressure approach. So you're supposed to like lay back. Like, hey, you figure it out what you want. And she was like, he didn't push me and I don't like him. And I was like, all right. And then another guy stood up and pointed in my face screaming because we wouldn't give him a low rate on a $3,000 loan. And for those unaware, if you want such a small loan, the bank is like, this guy has no money. So he wants his (laughs) tiny loan. And this guy literally drove off the lot in his car that was rusted out and the muffler was dragging the ground, making sparks yeah. come up. Well, and I mean, I he like, needed a new car. He did. And our, my boss told me, he says, I can't let you drive home in your current car. It's too dangerous. He's like, F you guys. Oh, you're trying to screw me over. I'm like, all right. Okay. And that's like a daily, like you will get yelled at daily if you work at a car dealership. And I did not want that, but I got tricked. You don't want to be yelled at? Yeah. Never I, by I, anyone. Never. Oh my God. I feel like I've had so many crazy jobs and so many weird jobs. I could talk about this for like hours. (laughs) I got yelled at when I was, so one of my first jobs was at Aldo when I had Aldo shoe place. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a shoe designer was in college. I was working at Aldo and um, this lady had yelled at me. Actually, it wasn't my first job, but whatever. It was one of the first of many. And this lady came in and started yelling at me that I had convinced her and forced her to buy these shoes (laughs) and that she had, that I had actually ripped the credit card out of her hand and bought the shoes for her and like shoved them in her face. And she came like yelling at me and my manager that I did this and that she needs to return the shoes, even though she had clearly worn them for like (laughs) weeks. And I had never seen this lady like in my life. So that was fun. I feel like I've, oh God, that one was weird. I was also um, a 
life drawing model in college and I wanted this job so badly for properly years. Properly worded. Yes, thank you. I know, like just came to my mind what it was actually called. Um, and I wanted it so bad freshman year of college and it was like the most sought after job at school. And like a couple of our friends were all going after it. And then finally junior year, I got the job. I applied for it three times and I was so excited to be a life drawing model. I was so excited because you get to be like a part of the art class. So you're getting a lesson on top of it. But then for extra, like you can make extra money doing it on like Friday nights. And it was more of like a, all art majors could go, except the teacher was just so like, what's the word? Um, unaware and just like, didn't really have much consideration or respect for the life drawing models and like let people have their phones out. Oh my God. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh my God, no. And then I quit like immediately. That's so um, weird that they were just, it's supposed to be like a, not intimate in like a sexual way, but intimate in like kind of a closed off. Yeah, I was way. like, why wouldn't you say something? Like no phones, like I was mortified. So that was fun. Um, great thing to do if you want to boost your confidence though and be more comfortable with yourself. I do suggest it. It's a hard job to get though. I looked for it in New York too and it's a tough job. Well, you're much braver than I am. I would never do that. Uh, <laughs> I, it would be it's not for everyone. a blend of very, very pale paints and then a very harsh line where it gets, <laughs> the skin gets a little darker. They actually did that on a recent episode of The Bachelorette and I had never really seen it in action. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. But you, I, mean, I mean, it's you hard. You have to like hold the poses for like a long period of time. Like it was cool though seeing people's drawings with you and stuff though that would be cool it was definitely interesting did anyone ever creepily dm you their drawings of you no or is it more professional oh actually i mean that happens sometimes but it's not like um creepy be able to yeah send me, like drawings that they've done of me which i always think is really cool and nice i have much creepier dms than that yeah i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about jobs in college i'm trying to th- I was a tutor and no one ever came to see me. Um, <laughs> but really other than that, it was just like odd jobs. It was Sorry, more so yeah. like being in clubs and because in college you're like bored. You're like, oh, I'll do this job for $9 an hour, three hours a week. That's a normal thing. <laughs> I worked as a seamstress at Bowling Green for like four years, like my entire BG. I was a seamstress for the costume department. I loved that job. That does I sound loved neat. That job so much. That was really cool. But it was a lot to do on top of the um, the life drawing modeling job. That was a lot. You also mentioned, you know, doing these things on Friday nights. I did have a job. I worked at the city newspaper, like it was the 1950s, and I covered <laughs> high school football every Friday night our senior year. And that was oh, really. I was like in the middle of cornfields, like just just watching bad football. Each team had like 15 players and it was like me and the parents and I'd get like a free hot dog in the press box. <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was good experience. If you like want to be a sports writer, which I thought I did at the time, but I was like, man, people do this for their career. And then I would like, I'd like want to come home to the parties. Oh, we live together. Like, yeah. And I would remember I'd walk into like a party and be like, Hey, and I was just tired and everyone's mm-hmm. already there, you know? a few beers yeah. deep and I was like and I lived in a dungeon room in our basement so yeah, I couldn't really like great. go relax no uh, I guess the advice yeah. for college kids is just to do everything because then you'll find stuff you don't like yeah I think you should absolutely I think you should I think it's important to work through during college if you can um obviously if you have the time to pick up some sort of extra job I always think it's just like good for your brain and you know work ethic and for applying for future jobs speaking of um football though I had a date and this guy was so on me about whether I liked football or not (laughs) and I like sports like I liked basketball and hockey and baseball and boxing like I could watch all of that and like have a great time with you and soccer like no problem 
but football's just like the lowest on my list. And he was like, you don't like football? Like really just like <laughs> kept asking. And I was like, I don't. I mean, was this in New York? For someone? This was in New York. And I was like, the Bears? Like, I don't know. He's like, so you don't watch it? And I'm like, no, <laughs> but like if I'm dating someone, and like it's my on. ex-boyfriend, we used to like watch, you know, football games like every Sunday together, like do the Super Bowl thing. Great. Totally can get down. It's just like not my top three sports. And I was finally like, do you like football? Because clearly you do. And he was like, honestly, not really. And I was <laughs> like, what? That's so weird. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm not really a sports person, so. <laughs> when it comes to, like, dating and that stuff, like, I write about sports for my work. So mm-hmm. when I'm seeing new ladies, such as now, lady, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I don't, like, like, I don't really watch football, but I'm trying to learn. I'm like, I don't want to talk sports with you. I have to talk about it all day and have weird people on the internet tweet at me saying that I'm stupid. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to sit down in my leisure time or on a date and like talk football with my date. I just think I always thought that was weird and like inappropriate unless the girl is a huge fan, then it's appropriate. But like, if you're getting harassed, like, how don't you like it? It's like, I don't like what's the, the, there's no explanation. Yeah. I'm like, I can, I can get down. I can watch a game. I'm just not going to like paint up. It was, it was just so so bizarre he ended up like texting me an apology like, really fine sorry get on you about football fandom yeah <laughs> like no problem buddy so i think a lot of i mean our feedback so far and our you know videos are blowing up a bit is that people love to hear our dating stories yeah. even though our most my most famous one and yours they're on the same episode I got blocked on Instagram because of mine, but uh, my next topic or story Mm -hmm. cannot block me because there's no way she listens. Um, And I don't name (laughs) anyone, but I was thinking when we're talking about like bad jobs and, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, things in school, I was thinking of the topic of like dating a coworker or classmate. So everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to be like Jim and Pam from the office. That's how it always goes. And it's never how it goes ever. Because that's not real. It's a TV show. So Great point. I was in that mindset when I was 18, a freshman in college, and I was in this two-year program that in the honors college, of course, and it was <laughs> every day for an hour, like a high school class for two years. It was every day. And I dated one of the girls in the program of only 16 people. And this was like oh a tight knit, yeah, this was like a tight knit group. So I would, so basically I, w- I went in the college. I'm like, I don't want to have a girlfriend in college. And then there's this girl mm-hmm. in my class. I'm like, I want to date that girl. So then <laughs> over winter break, I messaged her was like, Hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And winter break in college is like a month. So it was clearly not working out. She was a little uh, different lady. So we start dating and we show up mm-hmm. to class and everyone knows because this class was like 10 super Christian girls and then six of us who weren't. I'm not, I'm not that nice. it's all girls and me, but there was guys in there. Mm-hmm. And we broke up like six weeks later. You know how freshman college dating is like high school dating almost. Yeah, and basically. So I would go to class just glum, just not smiling. Mm-hmm. And I was very immature about it. And then she was like, I want to date you again. And I was like, you got it. I'm in. So I dated her again (laughs) for like Mm -hmm. a month. Nothing long this time. And then the second year when we got back, I just like was very immature. I openly ignored her. I was like, I can't speak to you. Oh, Steven. Okay. Because I would get like anxiety seeing her. But Mm -hmm. not that I'm this, you know, victim of the story. I'm just explaining what Mm -hmm. happened with prefaces of being immature. But the point was, my teacher one time was like, hey, if you let this affect class, like, I'm going to basically, like, beat you. Like, pull it together. Like, you guys need to be mature. And I'm like, but she broke up with me. What am I going to (laughs) do? But it was just a bad idea. And ever since then, anytime I work somewhere and there's, like, a a girl I, you know, might think of chatting with, I just, like, ignore them. I'm like, hello, hi, how are you? Can't date you. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you should dip your pen in the company ink, like, ever. No, I'm not about it. 
because then such a bad idea. It's like if you break up, one of you is going to have to quit. Yeah. Who's going to quit? Just, no. And that that's no. totally scarred me. Even though I mean, like I said, it was I mean, I'm to blame as well. But I was like, man, that was a dumb idea. And like mm-hmm. after we broke up the first time, she would like come to class dressed very scantily clad. And I'd be like, I know what's happening here. And it's going to oh, work. Oh, you think that was for you? It was. I was told. I was told it was. You were not... told. Good. Yeah, because we, yeah. I didn't just say this. I'm like, hey, I'm the misogynist 18-year-old. No, she told me. Oh, okay. um, she told you. Well, usually people think that. And then it's. No, no. I didn't even think it. She said, you see what I was wearing? I was okay. like, no, I didn't even look. <laughs> yeah, she wore a low-cut sweater and I knew it was for me. Oh, no. wow. Just well, I feel like that's what guys like usually assume, which ends up being um, a problem for me quite often because I that like, you're trying to, to win them I, back. Yeah, I'm like sad to say that I dress like this every day, even at home when no one is around. Um, not for you, buddy. <laughs> that's how I want to be let down in the future. Not for you, buddy. And then left yeah. at the altar. I really got to, I called guys buddy all the time to make it like real clear i'm like all right bud <laughs> been great that is a good strategy mm-hmm. i will actually ever- call girls mm-hmm. dude or man because that's how i talk mm-hmm. and yeah then- i do that a lot too with other guys but that i'll be like into i'll call them like dude and yeah. then i'm like oh like it's right. like you can't be like in the bedroom be like all right man i'm ready <laughs> if, I'm ta- <laughs> if i'm talking to a girl dude <laughs> <laughs> that dapper up that was some good stuff right there <laughs> if you can those lines ima- are always my favorite that was really good thank you that's how i would say it peace <laughs> yeah but see yeah i see you i don't want to <laughs> delve on too much <laughs> in my freshman year emotionally scarring experience did mm-hmm. you ever did you ever dip your pen in the in the proverbial ink no so I mean, I always was in fashion classes. I mean, I went to an all girls high school and then I went to college and it was fashion classes, classes that were mostly girls. And then I went to FIT for fashion, more fashion classes, which was also mostly girls. So I never really um, had classes with guys, which I was always so heartbroken over (laughs) um, because I wanted, I totally wanted to meet a guy in class and I thought that was so cute. But as for work, I am so against dating anyone that you work with. I think it is a hard no. And I had this, my first job, once I moved to New York, I got a job as a designer for like this underwear brand. It was really, it was a weird job. It was literally in a closet. It was so dusty. I was sneezing constantly. It was never cleaned. It was like a fifth floor walk up. It was so dirty. And the boss was trying to get me to date his son who also worked there. And he would only let me go to lunch when his son was also going to lunch. So he would be like, okay, Renee. Um, I don't even remember his name. When Connor was, is trying, wants to go get coffee. You can go get coffee with him now. And I was like, what the, like, no dude. And he would have us go on walks together and go get lunch together. And it was so uncomfortable. Was the son uncomfortable uncomfortable too? Yeah, he was like, I mean, he was, I felt bad because his dad was like so clearly trying to do this, but also he could have been like, you know, no, like, what are you doing? This is so awkward. But he was just kind of like, okay. And I was like, ugh. Free date. Oh, it's awful. Needed to get out of that job. So I ended up, I ended up quitting. Um, yeah. that's always weird to me when people are like I'm going to set you up with this person it's like mm, yeah it's always the isn't... boss's yeah. son <laughs> it's always. like a romance I'm novel like, I'm like no no like, no I do not and it puts you in such an awkward position yeah. it's just terrible puts you in such an awkward position that happened to me in my one of my other jobs too at the holiday party my the CEO of the company was introducing me to like every single family member that he had and That's I was so like, weird. I'm I I have so many of these stories <laughs> oh my god it's disgusting one the vice president of um or the CFO he was a CFO of my old job 
at our first holiday, first party, first work party, he introduced me to his daughter as her new mother. Oh my this God. Is <laughs> Your new mom. And I was like, <laughs> close in age to this girl. I was mortified. Terrible. I should have known then that like I needed to quit that this job was going to be extremely toxic, but here I am oh ignoring God. red flags once again. Yeah. Join the club. Um, yeah. Terrible. But on that, you know, red flag topic, <laughs> it leads right into, um, you know, we were asked if we can give dating advice to eligible bachelors and bachelorettes who are looking to date us. Um, you know, we just said we ignore red flags, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, you know, we'll give most people a shot. Um, full disclosure, I have been on a few dates with a lady, and it's been a fun time. Wow. She's the same like a, lady? Yeah, the you same lady. One lady? Wow. One lady. You know, you, you that's get on these funny. dating apps, and you go, maybe I'll go wild and date 10 girls. And then you meet one lady, and you go... Why would I do that? That's the dumbest thing I've ever thought of in my life. Well, that's life. like the whole dream, right? With the dating apps, that's like what you ideally want. Well, most people, I would say, unless you're just trying to hook up, but. Yeah. And I'm never doing that. See, in the past, I would get on these Tinder dates and some ladies were like, oh, I thought we were going to, you know, fiddle around a little bit. And I was like, I was trying to get to know you. I've been watching too much of The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> and this has happened to me. And they're like, oh, I thought you didn't like me. I'm like, we just met. Like, I'm not a veteran of these. I've had them for a long time or have had them for a long time, but I don't know, like, the etiquette, you know? I feel like girls would go on a lot of dates with, like, sh uh, poopy guys. I almost swore in my own show that I don't swear on. <laughs> I go on bad dates, and then I'm there, and I'm like, hello, would you like to get a, a Dairy Queen Blizzard and listen to oh, some yeah, music? I love Dairy Queen. And so I think they're thrown off sometimes because I, I don't, you know, personify the coolness enough of a normal hinge guy are you a hinge or a tinder guy so you're saying you're not going in with the mindset of a hookup you're going in never. with the mindset of i want to get to know you i've never once gone in with the mindset of a hookup because i my catch i catchphrase i always say i don't want to end up on cnn so let's say i'm out in public with a lady and i lean in for a kiss and she maces me and a camera crew's there and they're like this guy tried to harass this woman and i'm like no i was told i should do this so i never i will i'd rather die sitting there than make the first move on a first date because so for you the girl has to make the first move on the if first it's date. a first tinder date and we have not discussed anything remotely sexual yes because i the thought of them saying no would cause me that my heart to explode and to have an aneurysm at the same time so I get that. I feel like, like a lot of, yeah, it's 2020, okay. you know, you don't want to be forcing girls to do stuff. I'm not saying I'm going to like rip my pants off, but like, you know, even like, I always say like, if you want to do this and then they're like, yeah, duh. I'm like, oh, I know I'm very hot. Sorry. <laughs> but that's always my thing. Cause it's, you know, you don't want I someone to be like. I think that's a good way to go about it. I think that's interesting. I don't think that's something um, everyone would assume um I don't think so. about you or in general when they're going out on dates um about making the first move maybe I, maybe i should put that in my, my profiles if i need them in the yeah. future i will yeah, never I make the make first move unless i have express written consent but do you ask them out do you mean like say like oh like do you want to like go do this date yeah 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 i'll do that but like anything physical, they have to do the first move. At least the first, if, if it's the first night we're hanging out and we've been hanging out for like two hours mm -hmm. and the girl starts looking at you like, hey, and you, and I don't like making eye contact with people, you know, for too long, <laughs> kind of like a scared lemur of sorts. <laughs> and so I don't like to, you know, mm -hmm. keep staring. And then I had a girl in the past go, are you going to kiss me or not? And we had only known each other for two hours. And I was like, we can. You should have just said something a little nicer. Oh, you didn't like just go for the kiss right then? No, well, I did. I did after she said that. But I was so thrown <laughs> off. I was like, oh my, oh my. I didn't know. I thought, I'm like, I, I'm i old now. I have my own health insurance. I need to like get to know girls, you know? Yeah. But maybe they just think, because then I'm like, I had plenty of situations where you start 
with the physical stuff and then you get to know the person but maybe i want to get to know the person first and then see if they're terrible good. at the physical stuff or maybe i'm bad and they don't like it so that's my roundabout way of saying i'm looking for ladies that are gonna bend me over and peg me all right <laughs> metaphorically speaking i feel like that should be your your tinder bio <laughs> and i think you'll get all the likes oh my god i'd have dominatrixes showing up to my house be like no it was a joke <laughs> but yeah i guess the rest of my advice oh there's always dogs barking in the background of zoom calls it's all right it's it's the way of the world as long as a little kid doesn't run in um so I like girls that are going to be forward, I guess. So I know what they're yeah, into. Yeah, you like more forward girls, maybe a little bit more dominant. I would, if dominant personality wise, you know, okay. because I am hanging with a lady and she does have a more dominant personality, which mm-hmm. I like because I'll just sit on the couch all day and lose track of time. Yeah. But, you know, she's not like that. So it's, uh, it's nice. Dominant personality. Nice. I said, I was like, you have a commanding voice. I was like, well, commanding is a bad word. More like official. Like Official's not good either. <laughs> like you could be official? a legislator. <laughs> I don't know. But, but yeah, and then I, I guess I'm very easy. I, like I'll go out with literally anyone. And because I'll just be like, all right, well, pandemic changes things. But like I'll go out to like a dinner with any person. I'm not going to be like, oh, they're not up to my looks standards which is something ugly guys normally say they're like she's not hot enough like you look like a toe and that's why you don't have any dates <laughs> so basically you're saying shoot your shot if you're in the ohio area with steven yes i will respond to any dm with glee i'd be very excited you see that's <laughs> the trade-off you're getting a lot of dms that are some creepy i don't get any so if i got one even if it was horrifically creepy i'd be like i'll see where this goes <laughs> Oh my God. I got an unsolicited. So uns, I can never say this word properly. Unsolicited video. Oh, no. um, that was terrifying. Um, of a naked so, man. Yes. It was someone uh, pleasing themselves. That's so insane to me. Cause people send that from their account. Yeah. It was from, it was from their account. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> all right that's so weird i never i never understand the taking the rating of the show up to uh, pg-13 i've never understood the Mm -hmm. d-pick game i'm not a d-pick sender because i'm like once again i don't want to end up on the news and also i see that all the time and i'm not like that would make a good picture i should send this to (laughs) her without her knowing it's coming like why would i do that yeah Especially not yeah. through I, Instagram. Yeah, it's really, really, really bizarre. Um, but it happens. My DM, I do go through almost all of my DMs that I get just because sometimes people will say really funny shit and then I'll laugh about it. Um, like really, there's some really good pickup lines in there that always like make me giggle. Or yeah, that's um, fun. That's fun. And then it's like a lot of pyramid schemes oh. amongst <laughs> other other videos and photos but sometimes I do check I I have been more a little bit more open to dating apps I know I said I downloaded hinge in a weak moment I take that back um and I almost deleted the Raya app that I had to but um I take it back they're going fine I did just match um with a celebrity on one of my dating apps i'm not going to say who it is because i'm going to see where it goes and how it goes i'll i'll let you know uh stick around for episode the next episode and i know and i'm excited (laughs) i have all these friends like you and i had another friend who was like i had a friend get a linkedin message from the casting people for love is blind and i'm like you have to do it he's like why would i do it i'm like do it what? I'm like Do that's I know them? and guess guess where they're casting Love is Blind this season. Why don't you do it? Where? Chicago. You have to no. live there. You have to live there because in the show you you get engaged and then you all live in your hometown, which has to be, you know, where they're shooting it. So Wait. Love is Blind is gonna be in Chicago. Oh my god. We Michelle has to do it. Yes. 
I should tell it. my friend to send that casting director her email. Oh my god, yeah. I would not. I don't know. Would you do one of those shows? I don't think I. Could yeah. <laughs> you would do those. I would pay so much money for you to do it. I, I would. would I would like to do Love Is Blind because I like the the concept of it. I love that for you. I oh my god! Well, do... go move in with my sister. Go move into my parents' home. Yeah, and I'd be like, "What do you do for work?" I'd be like, oh, "I just work from home." <laughs> I work from home in my old roommate's parents' basement. basement. <laughs> It's great. But yeah, I was oh, like, that's so good. You're matching with celebrities. He's getting those messages. I'm like, I need to, I need to step up my game. Maybe they'll do love is blind in Cleveland. I think they should. I'm sure. I'm sure they are. You could get, if you go on like casting networks um, or backstage, any of those websites, they put whenever they're casting for like reality TV shows. Um hmm that are like love interest ones and stuff like that. I don't think I could be that open. Um, you do have to be super open about your life on those shows About now. that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I'll talk to you about it on this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but like, ooh, I don't know. Could you, um, could you be a contestant on The Bachelor? You know, my mom wants me to do that show so badly. Like she wants me to be on that show so badly. I don't know why. Um, and my sister too. She like, I think she like offered my sister money to apply for it because she wanted to. Well, you have to get to nominated it. technically. So your mom should just nominate you both. Yeah. I think I might've applied for it once, but then I was like, could I actually, could I actually do this? Sit in I, a mansion with 30 girls for six weeks and date oh, one guy. I, yeah. That's the thing. Would you want to be one of the many girls or would you want to be the one girl well what the way it is the, the way it is now you have to lose on the show to become like i would have to lose as a contestant on the bachelorette to become the bachelor so the key yeah. is to get on the show get past mm-hmm. the first night then you're going to get a bunch of social media followers and then you have to sabotage yourself at the end so then that way you lose and you're crying in the limo you're like i can't believe this happened to me and then they're like, do you want to be the next Bachelor? And then you're like, I'm set for life now. And you oh, might- I think I could do this. You might get a hot spouse. So. Yeah, I could I could possibly do that. I could definitely be one of the girls who doesn't win. Yeah, that's what I mean. And if you just make I mean, it like, but, past uh, the but first when night- it, What if they fall in love with you? What if you fall in love with them? Then it's just like, what, you get married? yeah it ends with an engagement but yeah i that's definitely the engagement. most like the most high profile ridiculous of the dating shows but stuff on netflix i think could be interesting because it might not hit a because there was a netflix dating show it was one of the episodes was new york city and i can't remember the name my sister knows she'll probably text me when she listens to this it was like they went on five blind dates and then they had to pick one person to go on a real date and it's a Netflix dating show and they did different cities. They did different yes, sexual orientations. Yes, I saw that show. I saw that show. I thought it was very okay. Um, I think they were older too. Yeah, one well, episode, was episode was like a 70 year old Jewish guy in New York. Yeah, that's dating what on I these, like, but socialites. I, I did like watching older people date. I found that to be much more entertaining and like interesting. Well, um, speaking of that, before the pandemic, they were casting for a senior citizen bachelor. But I don't know what happened. I remember to it. that, and I was so stoked. I wonder what happened. I mean, hopefully they didn't. Die. They all got. They all got COVID. The pandemic. No. <laughs> they had like one meeting way too close to lockdown oh with all of them, and they all died. Oh no. It's possible. Yeah. It I is cute just... to see older people date, but you're like, I don't want to be that older person dating. You know. I don't know. My grandma got engaged in a nursing home. That is pretty cool. That would be pretty bad. pretty cool. That would have been her third marriage, but. Well, I guess I mean for your first one. Let's say you're just a, a bachelorette till you're like 70. Then it's like, I you feel, don't. Yeah, I feel like most, yeah. You have to I be wonder. like, oh, this is my third or fourth thing. Yeah, you're my fourth. Don't get too excited. <laughs> so like what's, you know, we'll tread lightly here to avoid uh, creepers, but like what's some baseline things you're looking for in a date partner? certain things I'm looking for like let's say it's a Um, first date what are some things you want to see or not want to see 
Okay. Um, like, are you a big, he has to hold the door open person? No, not really. I mean, some that usually happens. Um, I'm, I'm pretty big on the person paying, um, the other. They should at least offer. Who should offer? No, I said the the guy should always say, I'll get it. And then from there it can go to, oh, I'll get half or okay or you know do you I mean? like it when a girl like offers to split is that important for you it makes me incredibly uncomfortable and it happened on a date with this girl i'm talking to you now and i was like and then she went to the bathroom and the the waiter came over i was like we're splitting it and i felt like such a a, a doofus why she was like, you just say no she was insistent on splitting it and i didn't want well, to get people, into an argument some people really do want to split it i am so against splitting it and I have like I could write a whole thesis paper on why I actually have a lot of opinions on it um yeah I'm always down the pay and but I just didn't want to like get into an argument on a first date I was like okay we'll split it but then I'll go buy the other stuff we're gonna get yeah I'm always like I can you know pick up some a bottle of wine at some point Mm -hmm. um but it should be a give and take yeah, and also if it's the first day and you're the one planning it. You picked exactly. the restaurant and like, you know, I just think if you're going, you're choosing all these things and you don't know me that well, you don't even know if I can yeah. afford that. And so it's like, I think it's really rude to assume that I can when you're the one who picked everything out. Um, so that's kind of always my thing. And that that's happened to me before when someone picked a really, really expensive place and it was right when I moved to New York and I had no money I had seriously no money and it was super expensive and they kept being like, get more drinks, get more drinks. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It was fine. And then the bill came and it was like splitsies. And I was like, what? (laughs) And I was like, oh my God. And I genuinely didn't think that my, I had enough in my debit card. Like I straight up, I might've had $30 and the bill was seriously 60. And I was like, it's going to get like, it's not going to go through. Like, this is so bad. And he was so much older than me too. And I was in school, I was 21. And I was like, whoa, this is bizarre. And then I tipped literally as much as I could because again, I was like, there's no way this is even gonna go through. And then he picked up my my check and was like, you didn't tip enough. And I was like, (laughs) I have no money no money you are a 31 year old man who's been working for the past full time for the past like at least seven years you can pick up the tab like the fact that I even spent time with you I am revolted by like disgusted yeah that's like like a lack of social skills and like yeah and I was like also awareness triple your tip like oh no yeah I've never done that never saw him again (laughs) never saw him that's the problem though. See, you're from, you're born and raised in the Midwest. So you're like, the guy should pick up the tab. Maybe some yeah. fancy East Coast people are like, I'm not, you know. She East Coast and West Coast, it. I feel like are, can be a little like, maybe that's their thing. I don't know. It's not a Midwest thing though. No, I mean, I mean like to be more like, I feel like in the Midwest, it's the expectation that the guy's going to pick up the check. Anytime I know, for, like I have friends from the Midwest who like, if you even say that the girls split it, they're like appalled. Like they yeah. would never, like yeah. they would never let a girl pay anything. That's, yeah, that's how it was always. Yeah, for me in high school too, it was always that way. Um, but I don't know, just not my thing. Just not my thing. And right, I also so, like I can't afford these dates. Oh, exactly. So. My view is if you're taking someone somewhere they were not already going to go to. So you're like, hey, I'll take you exactly. to dinner at this place you are not going to go to anyway. Yeah. I'll, and you, also you like, pay. if it's splitting then like, and we're either getting coffee or we're going on a walk in a park. Like, yeah. And also if you can't afford to pick up the bill, then why did you take me here? Exactly. Like you could have chosen McDonald's. I still would have gone out with you. Or got pizza and walked around New York City. Exactly. Get a dollar slice. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just like makes things uncomfortable for me. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so um, you need, I, the, yeah. need them to pay. I need them to pay. Um, For sure. What if you're at a dinner date and they're talking with food in their mouth? Are you immediately done or just no. depend on how nice they are? 
that's 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 pretty gross to me i like table table <laughs> manners you know um definitely not chewing with your mouth open i never chew with my mouth open um i have many videos of that so to prove you check out my food tiktok but um that's a no for me what else is a no um making any condescending comments about what i do yeah um that's always a no <laughs> any condescending career comments or bringing up marriage that's a no i had first that date. happen first date someone was like would you if we got married would you take my last name and i was like oh my god i gotta go skipping all the steps go. There you go. Talking about ex-girlfriends. There's so many like little things. The talking about exes thing, I hate. But sometimes people will be like, you know, when it's an when it's like an internet date, it might be like, oh, like, how'd you get how'd you end up here? Blah blah blah. It's like, well, it's living dating someone, blah blah blah. I think that's okay yeah, if it's in the context, but if you're like, oh, my ex was hilarious. <laughs> like that's someone, weird. Yeah. Someone asked me if I knew his ex-girlfriend because she was also from Chicago. And I did. Wow. Oh, it was terrible. I was like, oh God. How is the world so small? I would definitely, yeah, that's that's a major red flag if you're hyping up your exes or if they're like texting mm -hmm. their exes still and talking to them. Oh yeah. Unless I you're sharing custody too. of a child, there's no need. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I'm trying to think I, had a, I had a guy, um, a girl, and I, this guy's ex girlfriend FaceTime him when we were on the date. That should have been a major oh red flag God. for me, and I ignored it. I let that one slide. What did that they talk like, about? I was like, he didn't answer. He was oh. just like, it was so clear. And I was just like, oh. You got to delete that number. Awkward. Oh my God. But yeah. I'm trying to think of red flags without sounding like a douche um hmm someone invited their sister on a date to stop by on a first so date these things i'm saying are the same person but i don't want to make it like really obvious if they listen that's so weird um i like see but, if i was i had a girl over and my mom and sister were like oh can we pop over i said yes but don't come until this time because then the girl was here i said my mom's gonna come over but not like right this second. Like, I don't want you to be uncomfortable when she comes here. So I, she left, like she'd already been here for, it wasn't like I kicked her out, but it was like a heads up. I wasn't like, oh, my mom's here, come in. And like, some people just have no awareness. They'll do that. Like I'd, I'd be terrified if I was on a date with a girl and her dad showed up. I'd be like, no. is this your dad? <laughs> like, no, just a hard now on, on all of it. <laughs> um, terrifying. terrifying. I can't believe you got, I always joke when I meet girls on dates. I'm like, I'm like, I always hear these horror stories about like, you know, like you having to split an expensive meal or stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. I've never, to my knowledge, done anything that bad. So I'm like, huh, that's crazy. I've never had, you know, anything crazy. So it's good for me and probably my friends and other listeners who are, you know, a hermit style guys who don't really leave the house much be like, wow, this stuff does happen. It's and then we can not do it and be a hit on dates. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had some, some good first, a lot of really good first dates, but I've had some really weird ones. But I also like, I'm pretty open to like going out with different people, like giving people a shot. And then if you, some, you win some, you lose some. You know? <laughs> it's always sad too, when it's really bad. And they're like, oh, do you want to hang out again? You're like, oh God, oh, no. <laughs> I have like, oh God, I have a couple of those right now that I'm dreading well, and I you, feel terrible because I don't want to ghost because that's mean yeah and you have to be like hey you know I that was in Aziz's book like modern romance he was like it's easier to ghost because the alternative is being I have no interest in seeing you ever again yeah and it's <laughs> and like you sound it's, so mean yeah. And like the guys that I think I, that I go on dates with, I think are all gorgeous guys. I think they're all like extremely handsome, hot guys, 20 out of 10. So it's just your personality. Which is like, oh, you need to work on what's in weird. here. Yeah. Wow. Um, even though I'm sure there's now some guy 
think trying to figure out how he's going to let me down. So just we'll see. I guess it is a cycle. It is. Huh. It is a two way street. But um, yeah, I don't <laughs> let those guys know. Well, I think that was a solid dating advice, dating um, topic of advice for people looking to date us. I basically said, I'll pay for your dinner. Um, <laughs> you said you better pay for my dinner. Yeah. Um, we'll both date anyone, you know, <laughs> not too ugly, but <laughs> you don't want to be uh, people taking pictures of you and be like, are you okay? Um but what? like I don't I don't want to be in a date with someone really ugly and then have a friend see me and be like are you doing okay you know <laughs> oh my god that was my shallow guy statement of the, yeah. of the week <laughs> but that would never happen to me no that'll never happen and if it did mm-hmm. I'd say I'm doing great we're having a fun time I like dates mm-hmm. but like we'll, ra- we'll we'll wrap it up before we go for an hour um, you have all the stuff to pitch. So why don't you let people know where they can find your now very, very, um, booming social media accounts. Oh yeah. My food TikTok is peach mango juice 777. If you want to watch me chew with my mouth closed, um, I'll be there. 106,000 followers right now. 106,000 followers. Yeah. It's crazy crazy and that was all like since halloween too so it's been it's been like a solid month of growth and you know my instagram's at peach mango juice and the link in bio to buy my book my comic book coloring book is in there too and if the first date goes so well that you we end up dating and i'm your girlfriend you might be lucky enough for me to write a book about you and then we break up and i publish it so yeah, I won't dive too deep into that, but I saw that and I was like, huh. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's next episode, next episode, full story. Perfect. Um, Stick around. So I'm looking at our YouTube page right now. We just had someone comment that the character they would want to be from a TV or movie is the Gimp from Pulp Fiction. So a lot of weirdos on our page. Um, mm-hmm. Our first episode has over 500 views. That's very exciting. That. That's a lot for a YouTube podcast. It is. Um, and then, yeah, next episode, we can dive into your um, project you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll probably not do just a traditional Christmas episode, but we'll, we'll figure out. Because based on our schedule, two weeks from the publication of this episode is Christmas Eve. Yeah. So I have to think of it. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Could be a buying gifts for exes topic, but oh, we'll figure it out. Mm. But but anyway, um, you know, look for the Peach and Steve show on YouTube. You can leave us creepy comments directed towards either of us. Um, subscribe to it. Find us on Spotify. Hopefully we're in your Spotify wrapped um, yeah. for 2020. And we'll be back in two weeks right before Christmas. And we will see everyone then. <laughs>